one of you here in his presence this morning. Um, I want you to um, open your Bibles with me, please, to Genesis chapter 3. We love you, Uncle Thank you. I do love you, too. Thank you. I do. Genesis chapter 3. And I want to use a very well-known passage of Scripture. Now, let me tell you, tell, let me give you some background to where we are going. And I'm, and I'm really taking my time. But this is something that I have found. And it's only by way of experience. I have found that in most cases, most people don't understand the presence of God. I didn't say that they don't want it or they don't like it, but they don't understand the presence of God. Even when a lot of preachers are preaching, it's very clear that the presence of God is not understood. And so one thing that God is restoring to the church is the revelation of His presence. And it has to, and mark what I'm telling you, it has to be understood now more than ever. So I want you to go with me to Genesis 3. So let me give you um, a basic background to where we are heading. In creation, in creation, God reveals Himself to creation and from creation. And then God made a man in His image and in His likeness. Now say the word with me, the beginning. The beginning. Say it again. So that right there, without you realizing it, reveals something very simple. And this is what it reveals. Everything with God and man originates and begins in the presence of God. So that means everything that comes full cycle or full circle, that means if it starts with God, it has to come back to God. Now, now there's many things we do in the process, but the bottom line of it is, is that man began in the presence of God, departed from the presence of God, and then we then see that the conclusion of the cycle is that the church must come back to the fullness of the presence of God. Amen. That's really where we're heading. So I want to do something this morning that's very simple but yet very profound because it needs to be understood. Um, Genesis 3, I'm going to read you. I'm going to read you where the crime was committed that caused man to be removed from the presence. Now I want you to notice what I'm saying now. Man was removed from the presence. Say the word presence. presence. Say it one more time. Presence. Okay. Okay. So Genesis 3, and we're going to start, we're going to, we're going to literally pick up the story from, um, from verse 8. Well, you can't get, you have to read the whole thing trying to avoid reading the whole thing. I'm going to start from verse 7. Basically, the, the sin now has been committed. And now we pick up the story now because what happened when the sin was committed. Verse 7 of Genesis 3. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew and they, sorry, and they knew that they were opened and they knew that, sorry, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves a covering. That's a message if you're a preacher right there. You say, why? Because in the church there's a lot of cover-up that move on. That's a message, but I'm not preaching. I'm taking my time. Because we all come into the presence of God with some things we cover. Amen. Praise God. What's in your shirt? Amen. All right, praise the Lord. All right, leave us now. Verse 8, and they heard the sound of the Lord walking. This is good. You've got to hear it again now. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves, hear it again now, from the presence now, why does the Bible say they hid themselves from the presence? What does that mean? 
When somebody is not right with you, one of the things that somebody cannot do if they have a conscience, when they're not right with you, they cannot face you. Are you hearing me? They cannot face you. So you now have to understand now that when we say now the glory, the glory sometimes can be different to the presence. Now I'm going to tell you some things that's going to sound weird. I've seen people fall dead. Now I know most of you don't know that generation of church, but I have seen people get struck. Now I know it might surprise you, I see people get struck dead in the presence of God. I've seen people take Lord's Supper and fall dead. That is foreign to this generation of church because the fe when the fear of God is lifted, the presence means nothing. But I saw that, and that's where the presence of God is realized. And so now, we, let me get back to this simple truth. When a man is not right, he cannot face you, and he cannot look you in the eye. Now, in the natural, let me tell you what some people do. And let me show you how cunning people can be. Well, one, if they lie to you, what's funny is they know that you know that they're lying. But in the islands, we say, but in the Caribbean, we'd say you're barefaced. Because you know you're lying, but you're trying to get away with it. Instead of, and you know what you don't realize? The more you lie, you have to tell a lie to keep it going. Because everything is after its own kind. So that's why it's better, just stop digging and own up to it. And so when a person is not right, they cannot face you. And so prior to this, man was in fellowship with God. Man was in communion with God and sweet communion with God. There is nothing like it. Now, the Bible goes as far as to say now regarding the glory of God. The glory of God is where the goodness of God is revealed. And the Bible says in that goodness, it says the goodness of God leads man to repent. So we understand the glory is not the same as the presence. Now, watch this now. The sin takes place, and then the Word says something profound. It says that they heard the sound of the presence. What is missing today in the house of God is this, is the discernment of his presence. Can you discern the sound? Now, hear me clearly. Wherever there's sial ala Moshe, wherever there's sound, it means there's movement. Now that's why it says they heard, notice the terminology, it says they heard the what? Sound. sound of God walking in the presence of God. You know what's of God walking in the God? The sound. Now what's very interesting in the church is that that's what we don't understand. I'm going to make you laugh. Sometimes, and I want you to, and I'm real, and remember now, and I have to say this, and I hope I don't offend a lot of preachers who I do know, but this is probably, not probably, well, I have to say, my favorite church in America because I come here so much. And I've labored the last 10 years of my life here. But I still have to say this so you understand where this is coming from. This is not coming from a simple place. It's coming from a very strong place in the spirit. And you do good to heed it. Listen to this. When it says now that they knew the sound of the presence, the sound was not the instruments. In fact, if the truth is to be told, I've seen the instruments cause the presence to lift. And so you have to understand what does the sound sound like? And then there's an argument to what something sounds like. Because do you know when, when you hear a sound, in most instances, did you know you can feel sound? And so we've got to understand when it says the sound of God's presence, what was that sound? It clearly, number one, it clearly was not invisible. It was clearly audible. Yes. 
because they both heard it and they hid. You know what the child of Moshe, you know what most of your churches now do in America? The minute the presence of God comes, the church shuts it down. Or they don't know what to do with it. What do you do when the presence of God comes? Then the next question is, how do you discern it? The other question is, what is the presence here for? Three, how long does the presence tarry? Well, praise the Lord. Amen. We move on. No, 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 no. Please hear me now. How long does the presence tarry? At what point in the service? Now, meet, now if you're a preacher and you're putting together uh, and you want to have the flow of the Spirit, you're going to hear this clearly. At what point in the service does the presence come? At what point in the service does the presence thicken? At what point in the service does the presence stagnate? All of these are things and mysteries regarding the presence of God. When the presence of God stagnates in a church, there is no progression and there is no movement. So these are things that we're going to answer as we go along because I'm going to reveal to you some of these things as the Lord will release me to do it. The next thing that we're going to go into is this, and I'm going to hear it again. What is the cause of the presence of God being removed? Now, what does a church look like? when the presence of God is removed. That's something that when you touch now, it's going to be very offensive. What does a church look like when the presence of God is removed? Well, let me be very plain to you. It looks, it looks, it lo oh, I better shut my mouth. It looks, do you hear what I'm telling you right now? It looks, it looks polished. Now, don't shout me down. Listen. It looks polished, but it sounds mechanical. And faith becomes confused with hype. That's how you can tell when a church, when a church is becoming less supernatural, it becomes hype driven wow. and it becomes now I'm not talking about the flow of a meeting and the flow which is where you've got to have what I'm not talking that I'm talking about where something becomes mechanical when it becomes mechanical the presence lifts because where the presence of God is no longer flowing it stagnates let me tell you things that are clues to when a church stagnates. And these are questions that it, you, you have to be a person of great discernment to understand it. When a church becomes stagnant, one of the clues is this, and I believe it will really help you. You begin, you begin, what's what I'm saying? You begin to no longer feel the presence. Because as the presence of God comes in stages, it lifts in stages. And so that's why when the worship is not progressive, it begins to lift. When the worship is progressive, it begins to thicken. And so all of these are things that you begin to spot in a church. And so if you're a preacher and you go into a house, you can sense by the presence, the presence of God gives you permission to release the word. So when there's not a sufficient, hear this now, because people see me do this and they don't understand why. You will sometimes hear me say, and if you followed me, you'll know it 
I sometimes say this. I will, something will hit my spirit and you'll hear me say, I can't say that. And you know what some of you do? Because you don't understand it in the spirit realm. You say, uncle, say, no, you don't understand why. There's got to be a presence thick enough for that kind of word. And if the presence isn't thick enough, you won't, it will sound good to you. Are you hearing me now? These are telltale signs of the presence. And we're now talking now the global church right now. The global church right now is becoming more and more mechanical. Our worship today is more flesh driven. It's how we feel about God as if your feeling changes your duty towards God. The whole duty of man is to what? Okay, it's nothing to do with what you feel. I've preached some of the most powerful things when I didn't feel it. I've seen some of the most powerful miracles when I never felt anything. Hello, dear, wake up, you there? You ask, apostle, have you had this experience? Some of the most powerful miracles you've seen, you were preaching when you yourself were sick. Nobody knew because when you're in the presence, you don't matter. It's God. Are you hearing me? We don't matter in the presence of God. It is God. And so we have to understand now that in the grand scheme of things, there's a lot of things right now that would have to be removed from the church because these things that are now in the church have replaced the presence of God. You say, Apostle Rennie, what is all of these things that you're saying? Because you've said a lot of things. These are beliefs. You're not ready for this kind of word. These are the leaves. Like what Adam covered himself with. These are the leaves that the church has covered itself with because it can no longer face God's presence. They want the blessings, but not the presence. So that simply implies when a relationship is broken there is no presence so now let's look at the story now and I've only given to you one verse so far and we've got quite a few to go so follow it right now hear it again now it says they heard the what I am praying right now in the spirit that you develop an ear for the sound of the Lord hallelujah if, if there's I'm gonna tell you this right now if the musicians aren't playing it should not stop your worship. Should not stop your worship. Because you know what I learned? And it's not a, and I'm, give, and I'm saying this in any church. If the musicians don't have the sound, it means the sound is in your spirit. And you need to open your mouth. Your voice can carry you where music can't. Because the original sound of the spirit is in your voice. Because you are spirit made. Therefore your, mus your music is spirit. Your spirit was designed to worship. The sound is in your spirit. That's why you know when something isn't right. You know by the sound. Amen. Hallelujah. You better know the sound. But thank God Adam knew the sound. And at, here, here again, I said Adam knew the sound. And here what he goes on to say now. As you know now. Um, Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. From the what? Say it again. Now let me see if you remember what I taught you. What is the word presence? Say it again. Good. Say it again. All right. Good. Yes. The word presence is the word face. Okay. Go on. It's the word panim in Hebrew. Okay. Verse 9. And the Lord God called to Adam. Now watch this now. They ran, excuse me, they ran from the presence. But watch this. I love this. It says, but God called them. <laughs> 
You're not ready for this. In other words, God himself gave the call to his presence. Oh, hallelujah. Even though you sinned, you didn't hear what I said. I said, even though you sinned, even though you've done things that are so off before God, but yet God himself, from compassion, calls you to his presence. The question now is this, will you answer the call to his presence? Here, let's go, let me go on now, let me go on now. So, let me just go on. So the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? That's a message. <laughs> where is the church? Where are, let me just break it down right, let me take one minute to break this down. Where are you in your life? God said to Adam, where are you? I'm not talking geographically. Where are you in your life? What's going on? What's happening in your life? For God to say what's now, you got to ask that. This is God asking the question as if God don't know. Where are you? Hear this now. God, now, yeah, this is interesting right now. So in other words, God comes in and says to them, he, he gives them the call, the invitation to his presence. He comes to the, he, ask him, he comes to the place that they're familiar. God will always start with you at the place you're familiar with. Even in evangelism with the Jews, he said, you start where? Jerusalem. You start with where you're familiar. So God came to them and simply said to them, where are you? If we was to ask the church now, where are you? you no, know most of you would say, oh, let me tell you what most of you say. I'm in transition. <laughs> We're a very, very, very funny church. We're in transition. Where are you? 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 Mm -hmm. So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. If you're a preacher, that's a message. When a man is naked, he hides himself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded that you should not eat? Then the man said, the woman. <laughs> Coming from the islands, we could say a funny word, the woman. <laughs> the woman, the woman you gave to me, she gave me the tree and I ate. That's a message right there. Never underestimate the power of a woman. Oh, actually, no, that's a message right there. Let me tell you something. No, 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 it's not the woman's fault. You know, you know mo most men don't have, you, no, 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 take your time, take your time, take your time, take your time. Take your time, take your time, take your time. Take your time. You know, the fault, just simply saying it, the fault was not the woman's. The fault was the man. You say, why? What she gave him. No, 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 please, no, 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 do not lose the spirit of this message. Don't get carried away in humor. Okay, because the devil don't want you to hear this. The issue was this. It was not the woman's fault. The reason why it was the man's fault, it was because it was a failure to rule. When he was to have said, the word says we're not to. He gave in to emotion when he should have ruled. And if he had ruled, sin would never have been committed. So it's not the fault of the woman. 
Now you women can make your noise. So country. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. <laughs> but enough to say, write these things down. They were removed from the presence of God. Now, write these things down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you all these things because I want to open you to this point. Because I'm telling you the truth. I do not believe that the church understands the presence. I don't. I really don't. Because let me give you an example. Let me surprise you. Do you believe if you, un- I'm telling you, this is contrary to what you know. Do you believe if you understood the presence, you'd be looking for somebody to even lay hands on you? <laughs> See, all these are signs. Now, what you really are talking about You're really talking faith, anointing. You're not talking presence. When you acknowledge the presence, it means you've bypassed the man. You've bypassed whoever is preaching, and it means you get it direct from God. See, this is the key right now. Most of you, you still, well, bless the Lord, it's what you know. Amen. Amen. Move by faith. All of that is all the Word of God. But when we now talk presence, yes. if the truth be told, it's a mature church that can receive without someone touching them. But that does not happen unless the people know presence. Amen. Amen. See, the anointing comes on us. It works through us. The presence is beyond us. Are you hearing me? Hear it. So we're going to now look now at what separates you from the presence of God. And what happens when you're separated from the presence of God? What happens when you're separated from the presence of God? Let me tell you what happens. Because some of you are experiencing this. And you're not admitting it, but some of you are experiencing it. When there's a separation from the presence of God, let me tell you what you begin to feel. You begin to not be able to feel or sense the presence. That's why sometimes you come to church. That's why long worship is a frustration to people who are not right with God. You say, why? Because you're not at the place where you can enjoy it. You're at the place where all you can do is endure it because to you, worship is singing songs now. It's not singing songs anymore. It's no longer worship. It's now singing, you know, hear me. It's no longer worship. It's now singing songs. Your spirit's no longer connected because you're not right with whom you are worshiping. And so for you at that point, short praise and short worship is fine. But in Hebrew, intimacy means worship. So if intimacy means worship, in intimacy, and I'm not being rude or graphic, it's just common sense. In Hebrew, worship is intimacy. No 